Welcome to this first in a series of screencasts on contributing to Grails. Throughout this series I'll be looking at ways in which you can help contribute back to various Grails projects such as the Grails framework itself, its documentation, the user guide and reference guide and the grails.org website which itself is a Grails application. But first, all three of these projects are hosted on GitHub and the best way of submitting your changes is through GitHub pull requests. So that's what I'll be looking at in this first screencast. I'm going to start by selecting appropriate documentation issue from the Grails Jira which I have open here. I start by looking for the documentation component and then having a look at all the open issues. I have one that I want to look at here, 6134, and so what I'm going to do is assign that to myself. Now, not everyone will have permission to assign it, so you could also just add a comment to the issue that's saying that you were planning on to work on it, or you could in fact just work on it and uh, hope that nobody else is going to work on it at the same time. Uh, it's rare that that ever does happen. OK, now that I've assigned it to myself, what's the next step? Well, I need to get hold of the documentation source code. And as I said, this is a project on GitHub. So if we go to github.com, I'm going to have a look at the Grails user. And right at the top of the list, we have the Grails doc project. And as it says, this is the documentation project for the framework. So if I click on that, there we go, and we can see uh, the source code, the structure of the project. We can't work against this directly, so what we'll have to do is fork the project first into our own GitHub account, and that's what I'll do now. So up on the top right here, we have a fork button, and I have various options here, but uh, typically you'll only have the one which is fork to your own account, which I'll do now. And that will go ahead and create this copy of the Grails.project project in my own account. Once the repository has been forked, we're almost ready to get a local copy of the project source and start working with it. But first we need to give ourselves authorization to commit to this repository. So I've, uh, if you haven't done so already, go to help and follow these instructions on generating a key pair, setting your username and email in Git, and then GitHub also gives you an explanation of how to fork an existing repository. Okay, so I can now copy the SSH URL here, go to a terminal and execute git clone and pass in the URL there. That will then bring a copy of the whole project down to my local drive so that I can work on it. Okay, so I now have my clone. If we have a look in this directory, it's created a directory named after the project. So if I have a look in here, Grails doc lib resources src. If we have a look in src, we see there is a guide and a reference directory, and that is where the source for the user and reference guide goes. Okay, so I'm looking at issue 6134, environment variable Grails not documented. If you're going to be doing documentation fixes, it's best to find out where you're going to be making your changes. So this is to do with the command line. So if I go to the user guide and have a look at section 4, the command line, and we see this is where it explains how to start the Grails command. This looks like a suitable place to put something about Grails underscore opt environment variable. So I remember the number then go back here and if I open up my text editor src slash guide you'll find that there's several numbered gdoc files in there I want the command line 
and there we go. And this is using the standard GDoc wiki notation. So stars for unordered lists, at for monospace, etc. Okay, I'm now going to uh, make the changes and then we'll come back and commit them. I've now finished my changes, so if we go back to git in the terminal, if I run git status, I can see that it's showing modified the command line.gdoc. I can also have a look at the changes themselves by running git diff. There we go. Now, I'm currently on the master branch. In fact, I only have this one local branch called master. What I want to do is make my changes to a feature branch, and it's that that I'm going to submit as changes to the source project. So, what I'm going to do is create checkout minus p, and you've passed the name of a new branch. In this particular case, the branch is going to be named after the Jira issue, and this will basically fork the current branch. The branch that I'm currently on, i.e. master in this case. There we go, I'm now on branch grail 6134, witness the star next to the name on the left hand side. Uh, I'm now ready to commit my changes, so first I have to add them. Uh, I typically use the patch option which then asks me which changes I want to add. So I go yes, I want to include that one. Now finally, if I have a look at status, it will show me uh, what has changed. And now you may notice that it says changes to be committed. So when I run git commit, everything in that section will be included in this commit. So minus m commit message. For Grails, the commit message should, if there is a associated Jira issue, it should contain its ID, and it should also contain a, at least a brief description of what the change constitutes. So, I'm going to say this is, I've implemented Grails 6134. That is now committed with the uh, change so if I run git log I can see at the top implemented Grails 6134. So the change is now local how do I get this into my remote repository it's very straightforward we run git push the name of the remote repository uh, which is by default origin unless you actually change it yourself and then the name of the branch that I want to uh, push 6134. There we go. As you can see, it says new branch. If I now go to GitHub, and refresh, I'll see there's a Grails 6134 branch. Okay, so my fork has the change in it, but how do I get that back to the main Grails doc project? This is where pull requests come in. And if you have a look in the top right hand corner, you'll see a button for pull request. So I select that. And as you can see, it's saying you're asking Grails to pull one commit into Grails master from P. Ledbrook Grails 6134. That's all good. Uh, the current commit message has the explanation so I'm not going to add any more information here I'm just going to send the pull request as it stands okay so if I now go to uh, I'm currently in the Grails doc project and you see we have this new pull request I have full rights for this project, so I can actually commit the pull request changes myself. Notice that the pull request is currently open. So once I complete my changes, then we'll see that uh, that will change to closed. Uh, just before we do that, let's have a look at the commits in this project. Uh, notice that my current change, the Grail 6134, isn't there yet. I'm now going to go away, 
deal with the pull request and then I'll show you the results of that. I've now applied the pull request so if I refresh in this commits list you'll see that it now appears and in the pull request that is now gone. The issue is closed. Okay, so now that it's been applied, what do you do next? There's a last bit of tidying up that I want to do. I want to get my uh, fork up to date with the uh, original Grails doc project and I want to delete that feature branch because it has now been applied. So if we have a look at our Grails doc project, uh, I want to grab the HTTP URL. This is a, a read only one or I can use the git read only. Let's use HTTP. I want to add this as a another remote repository to my local clone. So I'm back on my local clone here and the magic syntax is git remote add. I'm going to call it upstream and this is the URL. Uh, in fact I'm going to change that to HTTP from HTTPS. Okay, and now if we have a look here, I'm currently on the master branch. Uh, I'm now going to pull from upstream and I'm going to pull the master branch from the Grails doc project. So if I now have a look at git log, we can see that the uh, pull request that we sent has been applied and we have now got it in our master branch. So last thing to do is to clean up that feature branch that we created. It's branch minus capital D, name of the branch 6134. And if we run git branch again, there we go, we're back on master. And now we can go through the whole process again, create another feature branch, uh, push it to the R local fork, and then um, send a pull request. Uh, we're not quite done yet. Our local copy is up to date, but our fork repository on GitHub isn't. So we just run git push origin master. So we're going to push our master branch to the R fork. And lastly, currently that Grail 6134 branch is still on GitHub as well. So if we have a look, if I go to plebrook slash grails doc, okay, we can see Grail 6134 is still there. To delete that, we use a push command again. But this time the syntax is colon. It's very important, it's just colon and then the name of the branch. And as Git will tell you, it's deleting that branch. If we go back, refresh, and that branch is now gone. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this screencast and that uh, you, this will hopefully have familiarized you enough with GitHub that you will feel confident enough to uh, get hold of Git and start creating pull requests for us. So thank you and, and hope to see you next time.